1978, a vocation brought the Warrens to the town of Enfield in North London. The reason for their arrival was the phenomenon known as the Enfield Poltergeist, the most documented manifestation of the paranormal entity in world history. Peggy Hodgson and her four young children, and especially 11-year-old Janet, became the object of attacks of a violent spirit. Terrible events began shortly after the Hodgsons moved into a new home. The first happened on August 30, 1977 Peggy was putting the children to bed when Janet complained to her that her brother's bed was shaking and vibrating, and someone was walking around their room. Entering her daughter's room, Peggy witnessed a strange phenomenon, a heavy chest of drawers moved by itself towards the door. Not wanting to scare the children, she tried to move it into place, but met with resistance, as if someone unseen was pushing from the other side. Later manifestations of the supernatural became more frequent. Most often, the ghost indicated its presence in the room with a loud knock, as if running down the walls from the ceiling to the floor. The frightened Hodgsons began to sleep in the same room, leaving the lights on at night. The ghost received special attention from Janet, who later admitted that shortly before the onset of terrible events, she and her sister played with the Ouija board, with which mediums communicate with the world of spirits. The poltergeist lifted the girl into the air, sometimes even hitting her against the walls in the window. Peggy turned to the neighbors for help. One of them, Vic Nottingham, personally walked around the Hodgson house and admitted that he heard strange knocking everywhere, as if coming from the walls. By that time, the phenomenon of the Enfield poltergeist was increasingly gaining public attention. The number of witnesses to inexplicable events in the house was increasing. Among the eyewitnesses were the police, who once came to the call and watched the chair move by itself. Janet was the victim of attacks at school, classmates mocked her, calling her the phantom girl. A variety of mediums from all over the country began to flock to the Hodgsons. Janet, on the other hand, became the victim of another terrible phenomenon. From time to time she began to speak in a low, hoarse voice, which a fragile 11-year-old girl could hardly imitate. With the help of mediums, the Hodgsons managed to find out that Janet was possessed by the spirit of an old man named Bill Wilkins, who previously lived in the house and died of a cerebral hemorrhage. Wilkins' relatives found later confirmed the story heard by the mediums from the girl. Dozens of reporters also ran to the scene every day, carefully documenting what was happening. On the web, you can find a recording of an interview of one of the researchers with Janet Hodgson, in which the voice of the deceased Bill Wilkins allegedly speaks through her. In fact, Ed and Lorraine Warren were not the main participants in the study of the Enfield poltergeist. By the time they arrived, rumors were spreading among the people that the ghost terrorizing the Hodgsons was a fake. They added fuel to the fire and videos showing Janet, imperceptibly from everyone, bending spoons in the kitchen in order to pass them off as the result of the tricks of otherworldly forces. Later, Janet admitted that she and her sister really embellished some phenomena, but firmly stood her ground when the conversation turned to the presence of an ominous ghost in the house. She was absolutely sure of his existence, as were the other members of her family. The Warrens did not stay in the mansion for long, but that was enough for Ed to study the manifestations of the poltergeist and come to the conclusion that the Hodgsons are not charlatans, and the spirit of the former owner, dissatisfied with the new cohabitants, really lives in their house. The Enfield poltergeist calmed down in 1978 after a priest from the local church performed a cleansing ceremony for the Hodgson home. However, Janet claimed that at night she and her mother continued to hear strange sounds, and sometimes there was a feeling that someone was watching them. But family life became positively calmer, albeit not for long. Janet's younger brother, Johnny, died of cancer at 14. Then the same disease took her mother, and many years later, 18-year-old son Janet died in his sleep. After the death of Peggy Hodgson, Claire Bennett moved into the house with her four children, but they did not live there for long. At night, the children heard a strange knock, it seemed to Claire herself that someone was watching her, and the last straw was the night when her 15-year-old son woke up and saw a man standing in the doorway in his room. The Bennetts left the house the next day, spending a total of two months there. Apparently, old man Bill Wilkins really valued his mansion. Thank you for your attention. Subscribe to the channel.